This webinar is designed to introduce you to the student management tools found in the Geometrics Admin Dashboard at manage.geometrics.net. Before we get started, I do want to make sure that you are aware of the available resources to assist you with Geometrics. We do have our Facebook and LinkedIn page. Here we will house information about upcoming webinars, conferences that we may attend, releases, as well as teacher tips. You do want to make sure that you follow these pages so that you can get that information. We also have an extensive knowledge base at support.geometrics.net. Our knowledge base includes articles that come with pictures and step-by-step -step directions that answer many of the questions you may have. You are also able to create a support ticket and receive help from our knowledgeable support team. Lastly, we have our YouTube page that houses our past and future webinars and an FAQ section that can also provide help with many of your questions. The student management tools that we will be looking at today include creating an account, adding a student to a classroom, merging student accounts, accessibility features available for students, changing a password, and student reports. To access our student management tools, we must first navigate to manage.geometrics.net, which is our admin dashboard, and log in using your admin credentials. If you do not have your admin credentials, you will need to talk to your campus administrator to get them assigned to you. Once we are signed into our dashboard, we will navigate to students on the left-hand menu of our dashboard. If you have already distributed a classroom code to your students, all of the students will appear here. If you have not distributed any classroom codes, then this will be blank. There will be no students here. First, we will create an account for a new student. To manually create a new student account, we're going to choose a new student and we're going to choose manual. We're going to enter the information for the student, their first name and their last name, you will notice that the required information is denoted with an asterisk. We will put the email address for the student. Please be aware that when adding student email addresses, if you use the school's email address, it will send try, attempt to send information to the school's email address, and many schools do not allow for students to receive um, emails from sources outside of the school. Now I do have the option here of going ahead and adding accessibility features. I will leave these off for now and I will show you how to add them later on in the video and what they are. And I'll choose create and now I have created my student account. We've created a new student account. Now let's add that student to an existing classroom. We will navigate to classrooms and here we will choose the classroom that we want to add the student to. I will go ahead and add the student to my big bird, my bird first period classroom. So I'm going to choose details and then students and plus new student. And then I have the option, I can create a new student from here, add an existing student or import a student. I'm going to go ahead and add existing student and I'm going to look for the students that I have created. I created Bigger Bird, so I'll choose Bigger Bird and choose Add Student. Now I have successfully added the student Bigger Bird to my classroom. I will now pause to give you a moment to manually create a new student and add them to the classroom.
Your student details area is going to hold a variety of information for you and allow you to do a lot with a student account. So we're going to navigate to the student details area and then I'll show you the features that are available. To access student details, I will need to navigate to students. And then I can scroll and look for a student specific, specifically by name, or I can begin to type in student information and locate that student. And once I locate the student, I will click details next to student. Within my details, there are a few things I'm able to do. First, I can log in as a student, and this will allow me to troubleshoot if a student is having trouble in the student portal. I can log in as them and then troubleshoot that, that trouble. I can reset the student's password. I can set a default if the student has misplaced their password, they don't remember what it is. I can give them a default password where so that they can log into the student portal. Once they're in the student portal, they will be given the option to reset their password. I can also archive a student and unarchive a student. Archiving a student removes a student from your classroom. Additionally, I can print the student's transcript. This is an interactive transcript. So if I click on it, it will take me to the student's score report for whatever it is that I clicked on. All right, and I'm also able to see the student, the activity, the start date, completed date, and the score. If it's a course, it will show me the progress as well as the time spent. And again, this is principal. So this is really good for student teacher conferences or if you have to speak to a counselor or if you have to speak with a parent. This will also show students progress over time. So that's something to keep in mind for student monitoring. Accessibility features are also available for the student. Clicking here to turn on the student's accessibility features will now allow that student to have highlighting on screen navigation. It will also allow the student to be able to have contrast in the student portal and additional time. When using this, be sure that this student will be allowed the same features when taking their certification exams because we do not want the student to get used to having these features and then not be able to have them on the certification exam. A student will have to open a practice exam to verify that they have received accessibility features. If you want to quickly verify within the admin panel, navigate to see all of your students and then there will be a green check mark under accessibility for any students who have accessibility features added. The ability to see individual student reports and skill tree is very important when determining if a student is ready for certification testing as well as the student's understanding of the content being taught. I will now show you how to look at an individual student's reports and skill tree. In student details, you are also able to see what classrooms the students are a part of. This appears when the students redeem a classroom code. Additionally, you're able to see the reports. This is really good information because it has all the products that students are enrolled in and then it has their progress for each product. This progress does include the course if it's included in that code as well as the practice exams. Now this is by individual student. You do have reports available by the classroom, but this is by individual student. You can choose a date picker and customize the date that you want to see the reports by. I'll go ahead and click here so that we can look at the reports. When viewing the student's reports, these are principal and exportable reports. You can utilize the date picker to use to see custom reports, otherwise it does default to the month. You're able to see here the test name and the test type, so whether it was a practice test or a course test. If you look, you're also able to see the attempt count. So I can see that this digital literacy practice test was attempted once, and this one was attempted three times. I can also, this is also interactive, so I can click on details here, and I am able to see the score report for that particular exam. That in, I do see the scores here and the date completed, so I have the information available right here under the student details. I'm also able to go down and see a skill tree for the student. 
Within this skill tree, these objectives are based on those with the actual certification exam and the categories for the certification exam. I do see the student's proficiency as well as the questions, the number of questions attempted. If I open it, I'm able to see the objectives, like 1.1, 1.2, their proficiency and the questions attempted. I can further open it and I'm able to see the questions that they got correct and the questions that they got incorrect and as well as questions that they have not attempted when the, within this particular objective. This is great for determining where my students need assistance at and when I'm having them to use the visual to and when I'm having them to utilize the view all questions in a study guide and create their own custom exams, I can easily look at my students, look at where my students are and know that, say, for instance, this students need to needs to work on content creation. They have not had many questions in content creation, so that's where they should focus their time as well as digital citizenship, because though they have had questions in digital citizenship, they only have a 41 percent proficiency in it. I will now pause to give you time to go to your student details, choose a student and look at their reports and their skill tree. We have all had those situations where we have figured out that a student isn't completing work because they have two accounts. So what do we do when we notice a student has two accounts? We merge the accounts. Once we merge the accounts, then all of their work will appear in one account. One account. So the, to do this, you actually need to have the student log into one of their accounts to do this and they will need at least the username for the account that they want to merge. If they do not know the username, you are able to try to see if you can locate it using the student's um, lookup in the admin portal. To merge a student account, like I said, we do need to be in one of the student's account. You see here, I've navigated to my Big Bird student account, and then I'm going to go to my account. You will also need the username of the account that you want to merge. I'm going to choose Merge Accounts here, and then I am going to sign in to the account that I want to merge. It's going to be Bigger Bird, and I have my password there. And then I'm going to choose merge. It will say the authentication was successful. That means the username and the password do match. And it's going forward. They will merge the account listed above into the account you are currently logged into. So it's going to merge Bigger Bird into my Big Bird account. And it wants to make sure I understand. I check yes that I understand. And I'm able to merge the accounts. Now, it does give a recovery key in the event that you need to reverse the process. If that happens, you will need this information and you will need to call Gmetric support in order to get that done.
While we are in our student account, I do also want to show you that it is possible for a student to change their password if they do not know it. They will need to know their current password to get into this account. But if you change it in the ad admin dashboard, then they can navigate over to my account and then choose change password to change their to change their password. We have now went through how to utilize the student management tools found in the Gmetrics admin dashboard. Those tools include creating a student's account manually, adding them to a classroom, merging students accounts, turning on accessibility features and verifying them, changing passwords and reviewing reports for individual students. Thank you for joining us. I want to invite you to stay connected with us through the Gmetrics Facebook and LinkedIn pages. Also, like and subscribe to the Gmetrics official YouTube page to receive instant alerts of new content postings, review previous webinars, and our FAQ channel where we will be posting videos addressing the most frequently asked questions. If you have a FAQ that you would like us to do a video for, please make sure to include that on their survey.